In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the supporting paragraphs as well as the MLA formatted support that are included in the sample MLA research paper that you will find in your Rules for Writers textbook. So we're going to pick up at the second paragraph, and I'm just going to go ahead and read through a few of these paragraphs aloud and then come back and discuss some of the things that the writer is doing effectively. So last we left off at our thesis, which was that the writer is trying to convince us that the government should pass laws that regulate healthy food and healthy uh, eating habits. And our first body paragraph takes off right here. Debates surrounding the government's role in regulating food have a long history in the United States. According to Lauren Goodwin, a food historian, 19th century reformers who sought to purify the food supply were called fanatics and radicals by critics who argued that consumers should be free to buy and eat what they want. Thanks to regulations, though, such as the 1906 Federal Pure Food and Drug Act, food beverages and medicine are largely free from toxins. In addition, to prevent contamination and the spread of disease, meat and dairy products are now inspected by the government agents to ensure that they meet health requirements. Such regulations can be considered reasonable because they protect us from harm with little, if any, noticeable consumer cost. It is not considered an unreasonable infringement on personal choice that contaminated meat or arsenic-laced cough drops are unavailable at our local supermarket. Rather, it is important government function to stop such harmful items from entering the marketplace. Let me pause there. To begin with, the paragraph has a clear topic statement that lets the reader know what the rest of this section is going to be about. We're going to be looking at the history of the government's role in regulating food. That topic sentence connects to or aligns with our thesis statement, which is that the government should continue doing this kind of work. And so the topic sentence is on topic or focused. From here, the writer uses a number of outside sources in order to support her claim that the United States has played a historic role in regulating food. The first example comes from a food historian named Lauren Goodwin. We get her name in the signal phrase. So, and then at the, at the uh, parenthetical citation is just the page number. There is no author's last name in this case because the name appears early on uh, in the sentence or in the signal phrase. From here, the writer explains other examples in which the government um, regulated food. And towards the end of the paragraph, she then explains why this is significant or why it's important. Notice that she continues to use the, um, the terms reasonable or unreasonable, as well as uh, cost, consumer cost. Both of those are key terms that appear in the thesis statement. And by repeating those key terms, as well as explaining her evidence or talking about the significance of her evidence, she has made clear why those supporting details help to relate to or support her thesis. As we continue on, we'll get a second body paragraph. I'm going to read this aloud as well and then stop and discuss what the writer is doing here. Even though our food meets current safety standards, there, needs, there is need for further regulation. Not all food dangers, for example, arise from obvious toxins like arsenic or E. coli. A diet that is low in nutritional value and high in sugar, fats, and refined grains, grains that have been processed to increase shelf life, but that contain little fiber, iron, and B vitamins can also be damaging over time. United States Department of Agriculture, Department of Health and Human Services, 36. A graph from the government's Dietary Guidelines for Americans, 2010, provides a visual representation of the American diet and how far off it is from the recommended nutritional standard. I'm going to stop there again because that is one paragraph, or it's our second body paragraph, or one unit. Stemming from the first body paragraph, which says, historically, the U.S. has played this role in regulating food, 
our second body paragraph argues that it needs to continue and expand the breadth of its regulations. The reasoning that the author gives for that is that not all dangers in our foods are obvious. Some just come from the fact that certain foods don't have a whole lot of nutritional value. And she cites the United States, a report that comes from the United States Department of Agriculture. Notice in this in-text citation, which you see in the parentheses, there is no signal phrase. And the author of this report are two department, are, is the Department of Agriculture, as well as the Department of Health and Human Services. They co-author the report together. And this information can be found on page 36 in the report. The writer then goes on to reference a specific graphic that comes from the report called Dietary Guidelines for Americans, 2010. At the end of this description or discussion of the graph, we get this indication here that says see figure one. And figure one will bring us to the graphic that is included in the essay. So we're going to scroll down until we find it. And here it is. The preceding paragraph, the, the line in the preceding paragraph is referencing this graph, right? So you can't just use a graph to throw it in there and take up space, but if you're discussing it or using it to support your position, then you can, in fact, use a graphic or an image or a chart of some sort as part of your research argument. Notice that when this chart is used, it is both discussed in the paragraph, it is referenced in a parenthetical citation, and then directly beneath the figure, it is labeled figure one. What is this graph showing? The graph shows that Americans consume foods three times uh, more fats and sugars and twice as many refined grains as recommended. And then again, we get the citation, the in-text citation. So that is another way that you might use support. To close, I just wanted to point to the idea that both the first and the second body paragraph are on topic. They are relevant to the thesis. They both use a variety of source material to help support the topic sentence. But it's not just made up of outside support. The writer also includes her own commentary or explanation in order to make it clear to her readers why it is that the outside source support or evidence that she used does in fact help support the claim or the thesis that she was putting forward. In the final video, we will take a look at the work cited.